Mark Luke. Gospel of Luke chapter 18. And once you get to chapter 18, we will be verses 9 through 14. Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verse 9 through 14. Let us stand for the reading of God's Word. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Actually, this was not the message I was going to preach tonight, but I was very, very inspired by uh, the Sunday school lesson um, this morning from Miss Gwen. Uh, and she actually made reference in the Sunday school lesson to that scripture. She, she did a scripture that was about praying, but then she made reference back to this scripture. And um, it's just one of those things, sometimes you hear a scripture and it really gets your mind and your heart and the spirit churning in you. And uh, so there's actually two inspirations as I started thinking. Um, so my two inspirations tonight for my message is Miss Swin's Sunday School lesson and a, uh, and a saying that uh, Papa John likes to say all the time. So... Uh, both of those will come in to play tonight with this message uh, from the Gospel of Luke. I want to start off with a story. There was a Texas rancher, and he met up with this Vermont dairy farmer. Anybody know where? Anybody ever been to Vermont? Okay, all right. Good deal. So he met up with this Vermont dairy farmer, and as they were talking, the man began talking about their business, and the Vermont uh, dairy farmer said, I have a dairy farm, 125 acres. And the Texas rancher laughed and he said, well, that's a small piece of land. Yankee, that ain't nothing. I can start at sunrise and get in my truck and start driving along the fence. And when the sun sets, I still haven't made it to the end of my land. And the Vermont dairy farmer said, I used to have a truck like that. <laughs> you know, we live in a we live in a time that people just like to brag. They like to boast, and it, it isn't just about money. As I was thinking, people just they will they will start challenging you. You mention something good that your child does to another parent, they're gonna respond with something their child just did. Yeah, do you know my child did this on the report card? Yeah, well, my child did this. Well, my child did It doesn't matter what it is. You get two people together comparing stuff, and it can be about their wardrobe, their car, their house, their finances, their children. It can be about anything, and it becomes a challenge. Bragging rights to see who has the best, who has the, the most important, whose child is the smartest, who's the best looking. People will debate and will brag and boast of about anything. The Bible has a word for that, and it's called pride. People have so much pride within themselves and within the people that they love that people will, will fight you over it. People will fight and will, will say all kind of bad things to other people because of their feelings about themselves. And it was the same way in the days of Christ. As, this, uh, as Christ is telling this parable, it's about this Pharisee that feels real high and mighty. You know, and he's sitting over there and he's saying, Lord, I'm a lot better than this loser. I do this and I do this and I don't commit adultery and I give a tenth of my tithes and I pray and I fast and I'm just wonderful. And this other guy sitting there, he just knows that he doesn't, he's not even worthy to be talking to God. 
And that's where it comes into play where God searches out your heart. So many people ask a lot of times if this is right or this is wrong. And a lot of times I tell them, it's your intent behind what you do. It's your intent of what you're doing. If you were, you can be doing something, you can be doing something everybody perceives as loving, but if your intent is to hurt somebody or to set somebody up by acting like their friend, then there's no, there's no reward from heaven in doing that nice deed if you are doing it to do harm. Then again, I've seen people doing things that I thought was bad and I later on realized, man, that person was doing something good. They just weren't bragging. They were keeping it to themselves. That is what this lesson is about. That's what the lesson this morning about that Miss Gwen had in Sunday school. It, it, it's about pride. It's about humility. It's about realizing that others are not beneath us and that we are not beneath others. We are all equal in God's eyes. <coughs> Miss Wint touched on something this morning about the word hypocrite, which is a the word that they called actors in those days. And what they would do is they would put on a mask and they would play out a part. And they were called hypocrites. And what it was is you didn't see who it was. It, they had a mask, so it was a person doing something but you not knowing what they were doing or who was doing it because of the match. So it was being one thing, really, but pretending to be something else. And that ties into the message of the Pharisees in those days who pretended to be very righteous, who pretended to be everything that they needed to be before God. And in doing so, they made sure that they belittle the other people that, that weren't as high as mighty in their eyes. They wore a mask of holiness. Tonight I want to ask yourself, who are you truly? And only you can answer it. Who are, who are we truly in our lives? Do we wear masks? Are we always who we pretend to show others? Or do we wear our own masks? Do we pretend to be one way, but we have ulterior motives before what we do? Because it's very easy, it's very easy to start practicing humility and then get to the point that you're so proud of how humble you are. And now you're right back to where you started because now you're back to not being humble at all because you're proud of how humble you are. And it's so easy to get caught up in doing and living for the Lord so much that you start thinking, Lord, I deserve this because I'm really living like I'm supposed to for you. And now that humility has been removed because you truly aren't living because you want to, it's because of how much pride you have in yourself. The words at the end of this say, those who will that exalt themselves, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Christ talked a lot about those who want to be first will be last, and those who want to be last will be first. The same thing is talked about with the tax collector and the Pharisee. Those who want to put themselves on a pedestal, they will find themselves down here. And those who are down here in their humility will find themselves up here in God's eyes. God is not interested in how great you are. He is interested in how great others are as a result of your life. Think about it. God is not interested in how great you are. He's interested in how great others are as a result of your life. Think, when was the last time that you lifted up a person and made them a better? We always say at the end of the prayers, a lot of people say, help us to leave here a better people. How many times have you left from somebody and made them a better person for having been with them? Lifted them up and exalted them and humbled yourself? Because I'm going to tell you, if I have a hard time with anything, it is that. If I get into a confrontation, had one of those about a week ago on that dreaded Facebook, and which I despise it to this day, and I don't know, but it still draws me in for some things. But I got into a debate with somebody over football, and lo and behold, when it was over with, it had turned into a debate of which one of us was living the better Christian life. And I don't know how it got there, but it got bad, and eventually, even though I still had that human pride. I had to sit there and I had to type back, listen, I'm sorry. Everything I've said has been wrong. You are right. And I, and I did it sincerely. And I did it weeping. 
And it was hard. Not only because I knew I was wrong, but because it's just hard to tell somebody, yeah, you were right and I was wrong. And you know what? The person commented back to me, no, I'm sorry, I was wrong. And now, throughout this past week, me and this person have established a wonderful relationship just because God said, you're going to have to sit there and you're going to have to swallow your pride. You're going to have to eat. I think the old thing is eat some crow. You're going to have to eat a little crow and you're going to have to submit yourself and humble yourself. It's so easy to get drawn in, no matter how close you are with God. It is so easy to get drawn in that the way you do things is better than the way the other person does things. As a Christian, we are always under a microscope. But we have to ask ourselves, who are we trying to impress? There's a story that I came across from Francois Fenelon. was a court preacher for King Louis XIV of France. And one Sunday when the king and his attendants arrived at the chapel for regular service, there was no one there in the church but the preacher. He was the only one there. King Louis demanded, what does this mean? And Francois said, the court preacher said, I had published that you would not come to church today in order that your majesty might see who serves God in truth and who flatters the king. Not one person showed up because the king wasn't going to be there. So many times we go and we do things for the wrong reason. So many times we go and do things for who may see. So many times people do things as long as they're going to get recognition for doing it. It's very easy to get pulled in and to look at the Pharisee and say, the Pharisee is wrong. How can he dare do that? Think about how wonderful he is and the tax collector is doing so much of a service to God and he's so much more righteousness and it's so easy to get angry with the Pharisee but then when you step back or at least when I step back today after listening to the lesson from Ms. Gwynn and I reflected on my own life I started saying to myself goodness gracious this Pharisee that I thought was such an awful person me and him have more in common than me and the tax collector and I started realizing it isn't about changing somebody else's life. Living for God is not about trying to change others' lives. It's about trying to change our own life. It's about living for God ourselves in a much better way. That is what really, Ms. Gwen, that's really what got me going today is realizing how can I be a better Christian? What am I doing and am I doing it for the right reasons? And I realize that even a pastor sometimes has to check himself at the door and has to step back and say, no, you're starting to make this a little more about you and a little less about God. Jesus Christ came to be a servant. He did not come to be served, but to serve. He came to humble himself in the lowliest of circumstances. Born in a stable, in a manger, running, people trying to kill him from the beginning. He humbled himself because he knew one day he'd be exalted. Are we doing the same thing? I read another little story and I thought it was very, very interesting. A, a, a deacon of a church was trying to impress a, a, a class of boys and they were all gathered around and the deacon said to them, he said, let me ask y'all a question. Y'all know me very well. Why do people call me a Christian? And he was wanting them to start pointing out all the things he's done in the church. Why do they call me a Christian? After a long pause, a little boy said, I know, maybe it's because they don't know you real well. <laughs> How easy it is to think about all the stuff we do. Well, I do this, I do that, I do this. That's why I'm a Christian. That's why I show God's favor. I hear that a lot on TV about being favored. I don't really, I don't really know. If God shows favoritism to me, it's not because I've earned it. I do believe that God does pour blessings in people's lives. I believe that I have been blessed. But I will tell you.